Okay, we'll get started. I'm going to check the uh, overhead here and see if it works. Okay. Everybody ready? Good morning, students of the word. I want to welcome everybody that's uh, here and is joining us um, on live video or viewing it later. And if you are watching the video, why please leave a comment so we know that you're there or that you saw this. I have a correction lab from last week. I mentioned that Denny's class had not been videoed. Not correct, not correct. Those of you who were here know that that wasn't correct. And here's the deal. I even watched it. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I thought I was watching Tuesday or Thursday or whenever the double B video. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, Denny. We start, <laughs> started our session uh, after the opening statements last week. Uh, we were talking about, kind of midway, in the spiritual gift of shepherding. Overseeing uh, bishop, some translations use, uh, most don't, and shepherd, overseer, um, pastor. Peter, in 1 Peter 5, reminds, he says, I'm an elder. And he reminds all shepherds that although they are shepherds, there is a what? Chief shepherd. That's right. And we did a little historical review of the apostasy of the church and how when men start getting into God's pattern, they mess it up totally and ended up with the papacy and uh, polluted God's pattern. We talked about the differences between overseers in the business world. Steve helped me out here by giving us the overview of layers of management in a business and explaining corporate structure and how each layer has overseers that are responsible for their piece of the pie, if you will, or their division. And they have their own responsibility and they're accountable to those above them for their area of responsibility. And this led us into the discussion of... Uh, how the original elders, at least some of whom were apostles, because in certain parts of Acts it talks about the elders of Jerusalem and the apostles. So at least some, we know Peter was, because he talks about I myself. So some were, some may not have been uh, the uh, early church, um, but started out the apostles uh, as elders. And how they blessed seven men. Who selected those men? The congregation, the, the people. They were going to serve, right? And um, they had been selected to handle the secular part of the church so that this first group of elders could devote their time to prayer and teaching. Right. And um, then we talk a little bit, uh, I think Llewellyn mentioned something about this was an early structure and how things evolved. And we've got Titus and uh, Titus 1 and 1 Timothy 3, where uh, Paul is talking about a more formal adaptation where the elders are designated uh, to an official capacity. And that became the pattern expected in God's flock. I pointed out that overseers managing monies of the church was not mentioned in Scripture again, um, except in Acts 11, 25 through 30, where Paul and Barnabas had been up in Antioch, and the uh, congregation, or congregations in Antioch, had heard about that there was maybe going to be a need, and they sent funds back to Jerusalem by Paul and Barnabas, and they brought those to the elder. Now, it doesn't say anything beyond that. They presented the funds to the elder. And we talked about while the overseers may not have been involved in the dispensing or spending of the funds of the church, the direct spending, they knew in their oversight role 
where those monies were going, where they were being dispersed, so that if there was any unscriptural thing taking place, any unscriptural usage of those funds, they could intervene to correct that. Because that was their role, is their role. Right? Okay, that's kind of where we left off. This spiritual gift of shepherd, overseer, bishop, is a unique gift in that it has uh, something that we don't see with any of the other gifts. There's a checklist of qualifications for someone to serve in the official capacity of an overseer, of a pastor, of an elder. And I'm using those interchangeably. I hope you understand that. Um, and this uh, checklist is delineated in, first, uh, in Titus 1 and in 1 Timothy 3. But even before you get to that list, there has to be a desire on the part of the individual to serve as an overseer. And clearly being, being a pastor, being an elder, being a shepherd is a gift. I mean, not everybody is given that gift. But even if one has been gifted with the ability to serve as an overseer, if he lacks the desire to do so, is that somebody you would want in that official capacity? No. Because if, let's say that we've got somebody that has the, the gift of, of giving and they don't want to give, <laughs> you know, you, you don't you say, well, okay, well, I guess we're just out of, you know, they, they won't function in that role. So, absent the desire to serve as an elder one would do a poor job. And what's the desire to be? Is it, is it so that he can have prestige or power? He has going no. And we've already talked about um, the good shepherd, right? We talked about the good shepherd's qualities. The person qualified for this office, though, he is, just as with any other gift, is already performing these things, is already using their gift even before they're officially designated or appointed. The individual who has this gift is already showing concern for the well-being of the flock. Is already looking at fellow believers, how can I help them grow stronger? He's already trying to think of ways to encourage him, those around him in the congregation to use their spiritual gifts to help grow the flock. He's already teaching truth to make certain error can be recognized. And he's already helping members mature and grow because this is his gift. Maybe he's not in the official capacity, but he's already doing these things because that's, that's what is laid on his heart by the Holy Spirit. Um, the ideal shepherd is not an Absalom. Sitting at the city gate, trying to curry favor, so that he can step into the seat of power. No. no. The ideal shepherd is so concerned with tending to the needs of the flock, helping to watch for wolves, trying to find good pasture, that he may not even have thought of officially serving in the capacity as an elder. He's just too busy. Trying to be the best servant that he can be to for the good shepherd. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the work that he's desiring to do is his is the work that has been laid on his heart. It's his gift that allows him to see what needs to be done, and that's what he's focused on. The Spirit's laid that on his heart. You can't contrive a love for God and a love for God's people. You can't contrive that. 
It's either there or it isn't there. So, I've mentioned something, but what specifically, what would, what would someone with this gift be doing? Serving the law. Okay. Give me an example. Would, would this person be a student of the scriptures? Would this person be aware of missing sheep when the body comes together? Would this person maybe call people? Hey, how are you doing? We missed you. Or write a note. Or hey, let's get together and have some coffee. Let's see how you're doing. Anything else that you can think of? Teaching. Mark mentioned. And it wouldn't be a burden for that person to teach, would it? It would be something they'd be delighted to do. It's often when we think about teaching. What you're doing right now, it's obviously this isn't contained to this building and what goes on when we get together, although that is that you can say that obviously that should be part of it, but I don't know that they actually had the structure that we have. No. Um, when this these things were written. So uh, teaching is really far reaching. It's well, sitting down with someone over a cup of coffee, teaching can take place there, mm -hmm. um, even over the phone. So it's not necessarily this formal standing up in front of everyone and, and teaching. Right. They may have written you know. Facebook articles on the in the first century for the church. Uh, you know, who knows? Students of the word, so they know what is not in the word. Well, if you don't, it's a, as who, but who, oh, uh, McConnell will talk about it. It's a car, it's a car wreck. It's a car pile up, hundred car pile up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times we create our own problems. Oh yeah, most of the time. What's that talking about? Well, it also talks about pay. It also talks about pay because he's talking about how that the ox that take, gets the grain out of the stocks and so forth needs to be allowed to eat. And so it definitely has a linkage to pay. We're going to talk about this in a little bit. Um, because uh, I think it's Peter that talks about you don't desire this office for the pay, for the money that you can get from it. Well, but I, I assume that for one side of the coin is also another side, uh, that a person that's trying to serve the congregation for self-aggrandizement and so forth would also
let's, uh, as we're considering what someone with this gift would be doing, let's look at Matthew. Turn over to Matthew 18, if you would. When uh, Matthew 18 starts, there's a parallel passage in Luke 9 and in Mark 9. Um, the apostles have been walking along, debating among themselves about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And in fact, verse 1 of Matthew 18, they asked Jesus that. In some of the other passages, Jesus asked them, what were you guys arguing about? And I think it was Mark, they didn't answer because, but he knew, and they knew he knew. And so depending on how this was perceived by different men, uh, Matthew says, they asked Jesus. And of course, they were still thinking in terms of the physical realm, how this kingdom was going to be structured and who was, who was going to be the right hand man and who was going to be doing this and who was that, that's how they were thinking and and Jesus calls a child over out of the crowd calls a child over and says come here and the child stands there in front of everybody in verse 2 and Jesus says I want to tell you this is where the rubber meets the road this is the truth or verily, verily. You've got to change. You've got to change the way you think about things. You've got to become like a little child. Otherwise, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The greatest person in the kingdom of heaven is the one who makes himself humble like this child. Now, he was trying to make that point, but there are two points in this whole scenario. One is he's trying to make the point to his apostles about their role in the kingdom. And as he washed their feet, he said, do you understand what I did for you here? This is, this is for you to understand what your role is going to be in the future. Here. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Then he kind of shifts gears. Um, some translations even have a little break. The new century um, because he's talking about a child as a child represents humility, but then he starts talking about a child in the cave. And he says, whoever accepts a child in my name accepts me. In one of the passages, they have said to him, I don't know if it's Luke, one of them, says, hey, we saw this John. John says, we, Lord, we saw this guy casting out demons in your name, and he's not part of us. And, and Jesus said, well, if he's not for us, he's, if, if he's not against us, he's for us. And, and then he starts into this in that same passage. So it seems as if Jesus is saying, there are those who are believers who maybe are not at the level that you are. They haven't had the same experience you are, you've had. If one of these little children, whoever accepts a child in my name accepts me. If one of these little children believes in me, and someone causes that child to sin, it would be better for that person to have a large stone, a millstone, uh, some translations say, tied around the neck, to toss him in the sea and drown. How terrible for the people of the world because of the things that caused them to sin. Sin is a terrible thing, Jesus says. Such things are going to happen. But how terrible for the one who causes them to happen. We don't want to be that person. <clears throat> if a man has a hundred sheep, but one of the sheep gets lost, he'll leave the other ninety-nine on the hill and go look for the lost sheep. I tell you the truth. If he finds it, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 
that were never lost. In the same way, your Father in heaven does not want any of these little children to be lost. This is an example of shepherding. This is one of the things that one who has received this gift is going to be doing. Although Jesus has called this child, as I mentioned in the first few verses there, to serve as an object lesson for these men who are here in front of him, who've been jockeying for a position, who's most important. And he wants to make that point. He wants to demonstrate that among adults, a child who has no status in that society, a child had no status, uh, but that child can serve as an ideal example of being the servant, being the ideal servant. And mostly, though, after that, we get past that, this, this passage is not about literal children, is it? You see that? So he's talking about new believers here. Otherwise, we have little, little children sinning and being lost, and we know that's not the case, right? So Jesus is talking about the person who has the burden on his heart to protect those new in the faith, to try to shield them from criticism that might be launched against them. Think about how... The Gentiles appeared to the Jews totally ignorant, totally naive to the Jewish, the things that the Jews, everything that they associated with being godly. And it is no wonder that God said through the apostles, no, no, no. Not this circumcision stuff, not this sacrifice stuff, not this keeping the law. No, no, no. Because they didn't have any of that background. Think how easily it would have been for them to get discouraged if those things had been set on them right from the beginning. And Paul says, either, either. No, no, no. You're not even keeping the law yourself. Why are you trying to bind on these new ones? make sense? And so, the one with the shepherd gift is watching out for the new ones. Helping them along. I think about the mother hen, and or you've seen pictures of ducks, but the mother hen kind of hurting her little chickens. They're not chickens, they're called uh, chicks. Along. Right? Just make sure if you get chickens that they lay eggs. Right, Danny? All right, sorry. A little private joke there. Okay. Um, so, he wants to, has this burden on his heart to protect the new in faith, to try to shield them from criticism, to try to keep them enthused. Who is the most enthusiastic? Who, who wants to go conquer the world, go tell the world about Jesus? <laughs> When is that the most burning thing that you generally see in a person? When is that? When they're young and depressed. Exactly. Crazy hair. <laughs> right? Go tell them what they, what, I just want to be with you, Lord. I just, ah, got to be around it. No, no, no. Go tell them what I've done for you.
Okay, let's, let's, this person wants to keep them encouraged so that they don't get discouraged and maybe even try to leave the group. Some concrete examples of that. Let's say that we've got a new couple in the faith, and they come to meet with the body, and... They've got a t-shirt, one, he has a t-shirt on that's got profanity on it. Is that somebody we would jump all over? No, but we wouldn't let it go, would we? Let me tell you here, brother. You, you're walking a different path. Here. And, you know, you, the, the Lord is to be... Revered, the Lord is to be honored. We, we don't want to, we don't want to use His name or, or do anything that could bring shame to Him, right? And what do you think about that T-shirt? You think maybe you think it would fit into the Scriptures? What are you doing? You can't be in here with that shirt. Go change. Go home and change your shirt. Difference, isn't there? <laughs> Shepherd heart versus maybe how we would react. Well, there would definitely be a reaction among the group. I can tell you that. Oh, yeah. You know, we all would have a reaction. Oh, yeah. 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 And rightly so. Rightly but it, so. But it matters. It's just like you're saying, it matters. Yes. And this is, I, I use these maybe a little far out, but maybe not so much. Examples because um, Jesus says if, if, if you cause one of these little ones to sin, he'd be better off if you had survived. <laughs> Tony, I hope I don't embarrass you. Uh, Tony told a story about one time when she was in church when Addie was small. And she was looking forward and heard all this laughing and couldn't figure out what was it. Well, Addie was, what, mooning the... Yeah, doing the, the <laughs> flashing the congregation behind. Well, you know, so she... I don't know, we don't... We don't the difference there is one is done in love to help the child understand what is acceptable and what is unacceptable versus um, well, there would be some who would say, well, just take, take her out and whop her behind. She'll remember. Yeah, yeah she'd remember. That's the bad thing about uh, about the So this is what one with this gift of pastoring and shepherding does. This passage right here. Um, I think it does a great job of revealing what the shepherd's heart looks like. We looked at Titus 1, 9. Um, so we know that one of the official roles of of an overseer would be performing those described responsibilities, teaching the truth, 
correcting those who are not teaching the truth by using the truth and doing it all with love. Uh, there are many other passages we could turn to, but I think Jesus' description of his role as a good shepherd and this passage here in Matthew 18 really describe the insides of one who has this gift. And just as every gift has a dark side, uh, this gift does too. And we've mentioned some of these. We've alluded to um, some of the most evident temptations that one who has this gift would be susceptible. Let's review them. I'll start you off. One of these is, this is my domain. This is my flock. This is, this is my realm to command. Shepherd, go ahead, Ben. Well, what you're saying, I think, is it's what the spirit does with the gift versus what the flesh tries to do with it. Exactly. Yeah. And there's always that pull, isn't there? Romans seven. There's always that pull. That shepherd does have to take ownership. Though. Yes, he's going to be held responsible. Yep. Much as what we talked about with Steve describing the layers. That person answers to the one above them or their area of responsibility. Um, what's another dark side trait? Pride. Pride. Yep, pride. Forgetting to lead by example as opposed to getting behind with the cattle prod. Right? Right. Um, We talked about that with in Second Corinthians, didn't we? Because Paul talked about I'm proud of it. And I am too. I am too. Proud to know y'all. Proud to call y'all brothers and sisters. Well, I think what Dave's talking about is they you're you're too far along to ever learn from anybody out here. Mm -hmm. And anytime I've ever talked, I've learned just as much from the uh, people out in the audience, my brothers and sisters. You're never, like you're saying fishing, if you can't ever learn, you think you can, all there is to learn about fishing, then you're not fishing. <laughs> well, what's the something about um, if a tree stops growing, it dies, or something like that? Yeah. There's some old saying like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I, we, we all are students throughout our lives. Well, and the shepherd is still part of the group. Yes. Still part of the body. Yes. But found things in the group. Mm -hmm. Another dark side, not knowing the book enough to keep the wolves out so that you recognize error, which is Bill was talking about there. It's a constant, again, this gets back to Alan's study. It's a constant study, 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 because you always come up with something different every time you go through it. I've heard uh, Jody talk about this, if not in here on Tuesday morning, about how our perspective in life is constantly changing. And so we look at a scripture that we looked at even last month, and we may see something that we didn't see before because our perspective is ever changing. Um, this is a tough one. Using wisdom to use the Solomon sword to separate tradition from man's tradition, from God's tradition and commands. Ooh, that can be a really fine line. And knowing the flock well enough to know how to present Mm -hmm. 
And, and, and an example might be, okay, we're going to take this away. When it comes time for the Lord's table, we'll just go and bring the stuff directly out of the back room. Now, that would bother some people. But what's the point? What is the point? Is this a bad tradition? No. Is it in the New Testament? No. But it helps us focus, doesn't it? Because we've got a physical point to focus on. And that was the whole idea of Jesus giving us the emblems. So we would have a point to focus on. And so what you're talking about is, well, just we just want to stir things up. We just want to change things up because... We see that there's a danger in that today. Is let's, let's make it more modern. And, mm-hmm. it, there can be some positive things in that, but is it worth some of the damage that can be done? That, that's a hard, you know, what, again, what motivates you in doing that? Yeah. Well, where, where is the differentiation between uh, one of these little children and a mature person? Right. Calendar years have nothing to do with spiritual maturity, though. Right? And even, even if somebody's been in the church, you could say, well, somebody's been in the church for 30 years, they should know better. Well, maybe they should. Well, this is where the teaching comes in yes. as well. If somebody's disgruntled uh, about something or, you know, the decision is made to do this or do that. against God in any way, shape, or form, then, then that's where the teaching, that's where the, where the caring and the love for the flock comes in, um, like Jody was saying. I mean, do, you, do, you, do you do this and disrupt everything, or do you, you know, is, is there a time to, to teach about uh, things and, and, and help people see so that, you know, people come along? And, yeah. You know, so. we, 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 we all... This is a gross generalization. There may be a few exceptions to this. We all resist change. We may think that we're great at making changes, but eh, don't mess with my mess. Well, I've been in the church before we took the Lord's Supper. We were trying to tell the person next to us that we love them. Yeah. Maybe feel correct to let go of the love. Okay? Because Alan, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> I got to think about that later. I don't know if it's all about me feeling that great, or I'm supposed to be focusing on that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, I but if you have something against your brother, you go to that brother and get it straightened out before you, right? So, you know. I don't know. But I'm just saying. Well, and the reason we get chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians is because of the way they were not loving each other at the supper. Yes. The Lord's Supper. So, yes. Okay, everybody together. We love you, Alan. And Vicky. And Vicky. All right. Well, um, we're part way through this. Um, this next one maybe won't take very long, so I'll go ahead. Uh, another one. Let's hire somebody to do the instruction. Somebody, uh, I don't, I don't like to teach anyway. So let's just hire somebody to do that. You see, now we don't do that, but there are groups that do. There are groups that do. Pardon?
Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, and of course, not taking time to know the flock, and therefore being ignorant of individual needs, that's a dark side. Uh, I'm just got other things on my mind. I don't have the time for that. It's a demanding job. And I uh, gave a talk one time in my younger days at a uh, meeting about the scripture that he that desires to be an elder desires uh, great work or something like that. I'm paraphrasing. And I added deal in there, a great deal of work, because it's, I mean, somebody mentioned 24-7 job of the shepherd. Yeah, it is. It is. And you might get, as a shepherd, you might get a call at 3 in the morning. Because that's when the lamb needs to be born. I used to get up during lambing season. I used to get up every three hours through the night. I remember one spring day, Dad was traveling in evangelistic work. And I was probably 12, 13, 14, somewhere in there. And I'd been getting up, I think, every two hours that night. And because uh, this one... You, I thought, was for sure going to lamb and come four o'clock. The alarm went off. Oh, mom, can you just? Yeah, I was worn out. Worn out. Anything else before we close? We need to pray for our shepherds. We need to pray for them because Bill. Well, just one thing. Uh, everybody. That's the reason, one of the reasons we have a multiple order. Yes. I don't mean, as a convict, that's why you don't need to preach to me or to me or whatever. But you need a multiple because some guys are going to be stronger in one church than the other. Mm -hmm. And you all need to, as you meet together, you need to recognize that in the church area. Right. And let that help each one of you to learn. Well, and maybe that's the case where someone who's a shepherd has that gift but is not official capacity would go to that person and try to say, you know, this is what this looks like from my perspective. There's like even some more of a modern kind of concept that I have sometimes in mind. Just it's even you see it like shepherds. soup is so thin that the sheep are starving to death. You, you can see that very, very common throughout. Like there's just, there's just not enough people in the seat, so how do I alter my message? It may be leaving it completely, but just put more people in the seat. Yeah, and, and I think that's what Jody was alluding to earlier. Uh, Cynthia, and then we'll close, Cynthia has told me, she said, I can remember going to church. She grew up in the Lutheran and subsequent to Presbyterian. She said, I can remember going to church and the Bible wasn't even referred to. It'd read something out of Reader's Digest or some other book. Let's uh, say, Alan, we, are you in a praying mood? Okay, let's say a prayer for uh, asking God's blessings on our shepherds. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be able to hear and study your
Thank you for your participation.